What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome to episode two of the No Code Corner sponsored by Bravo Studio. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about all things data. That means content, data, databases, APIs, API requests, post, get. What does it all mean? We'll talk about it and everything else in between. I did not mean for that to rhyme, but just, we'll just roll the thing. Data is the new king of the mountain. Data is the thing that makes the world go around, that makes applications tick. So with that being said, why would data matter to those of us that are building no-code applications? Whether it's a mobile app using something like Bravo Studio or a web application using a Webflow or any other tool out there, what, why does data matter? Well, the truth of the matter is a dirty little secret and it's very, very true and it's very important to remember that your design can be all sorts of fantastic, but if the data is trash, then no one's gonna use your app. So what is data? It's basically bits and pieces of content that are relevant. It has to be content, it has to be useful, it has to be contextual, it has to be real time, it has to be organized, structured, and available to be delivered when needed. You can think of data like chips and the database or the storage system for that data, like the bag that those chips come from. Every time I reach into that specific bag of chips, I know that I need to be pulling out that specific type of data. If I reach into a chip bag and I find a raw fish, there is serious lawsuit problems about to happen. All this talk about chips has got me very, very hungry. All right, so how do we create data and how do we store data so that we can use it for applications? Well, that's a huge question and it could be really simple or it could be really complex. You could technically create a Google spreadsheet and each of the items inside of that spreadsheet is considered data inside of a database. You could create an Airtable, which is another way to create a database that you can use that has bits of data inside of it. Actually, my board game application is running off of an Airtable database. But you can also pull different types of data that's stored in other databases. For instance, a WordPress website or a Webflow website. You're able to go in to those content management systems and grab that data and then parse it and put it wherever you need it in other places. At the very far end of the spectrum, you have things like APIs, public and private APIs. So you can tap into the Spotify API, or you can tap into a weather API or the YouTube API, and you can grab the types of information you need and then push that and put that wherever you need it to be. I'm gonna jump into the computer really quickly and give you a really simple example of how you can pull data from a database or an API request and apply it to your no-code platform like Bravo Studio in this case, and show you how you can update that content, that data, and see it happen in real time. So let's jump over to the database that's made inside of Airtable. It has a bunch of different entries, name, subtitle, details about the animal, images, so on and so forth, different things. But over here in Bravo Studio, I'm actually gonna create what are called get requests. I'm in, and you can watch the entire video if you want, but basically I'm just pulling the API from my specific Airtable. And you can see here, once I'm on my animals list, I press send, it's gonna send me all the information that's there. Look what's there. The animal name and the image and things like the details, subtitle, the time that that entry was made, as well as a bunch of other fields for you know, the image itself. But all of those are there. And all I'm saying is, hey, these are the bits of data from that source that I want. And when we do that, it goes into my application. Here's another example. We have my board game list, and this one is a little bit more complex even because it has lists and top 100s and categories and news articles and different things. And all of these are different requests. You can see when I head over to my Airtable um, that I have those different kind of boards almost or worksheets almost in like a Google sheet. Here's my top 100, here's my hot games list. I can actually jump over to my news articles. And when I open up, uh, my actual Cardboard Nerd application, there are all of the entries that are inside of my database. You can tell because if I go over to the news article here, I have a news article at the very top called Top 10 Games. And when we go back to our database, you can see there it is at the top, Top 10 Games. Let's name this Top 10 with the number 10, okay, to my application. I'm just gonna refresh really quickly top 10 games it updated to the number 10. And so now we have real-time data being used and it's all pulling 
from a data source and the no code application, Bravo Studio in this case, is just the design to code aspect and the data is being pulled elsewhere. There's other ways in Bravo Studio that you can make data collections. Uh, you can start from scratch or you can do an API import from an API file or Postman or Swagger or different ways. You can use Notion as your database or Google as your database. It doesn't matter. The point is that data is king. The data is king. All right, next up on the No Code Corner, I want to introduce you to Carla Fernandez, who is a maker of No Code applications. She has two published apps, four in development and on the way, and she's using Bravo Studio to build those applications. I had a really fun conversation with her, and I think you'll get a kick out of it. I am here with Carla Fernandez. Carla, how are you doing? I am doing great today. Thank you so much for joining me and being a part of the No Code Corner, where we're talking about no code, like principles and topics and theories and all the things that are going on in the space. Tell, do me a favor, uh, tell everybody out there who you are, what you do. Just give us a little bit of a Wikipedia bio of who you are. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I was in Wikipedia, maybe one day, right? So thank you, Jesse, for having me here. I'm like, it's a pleasure to be in your channel. So I help business build and launch their their products, the digital products out there. And I also mentor UX and UI to become designers, right? Like I help people become designers and uh, to be job ready when they finish the mentoring. You know, you've been part of this process. You've been also building products using no code applications and tools. Tell me a little bit about what that process has been like. Sure. So I tried to beat out my first app idea in 2011, but I couldn't learn how to deal with Objective-C. So, you know, this was the old uh, iOS thing, like, like today Swift, and it was too much for me. Like uh, I even like, you know, had already some knowledge in back end and front end development, but I couldn't build it. So since that time, what I did, I did a folder with all this content built for doing this app that was to not scarves. It was very simple, but it was a step by step to help people to create these uh, knots in a more creative way. So I had some friends helping me out doing the illustrations and the, doing this so cute and everything. I was really excited about it, but I couldn't build it. So I did this folder, I put all the content there. And what I did was like every year I took a look at it. Oh, I still cannot do this. Oh, no, no. So, you know, I did kept there on my backlog of ideas. So last year I actually learned about Bravo. And when I saw what I was able to build with that, I was really excited. So I thought, okay, you know what? That is the time. I will get back to that idea. I already have the content. I can learn the tool and build it up. So I did that. And uh, since January, like this year, I have been, I studied already more than 550 hours. I have launched 12 apps uh, we, using Bravo for iOS and Android and the Scarf app is one of them. And I have four others in development. Like it has been just a game changer. That's insane. Like you have two launch, you have four in development right now. And I just like, I love that story because in like, I, I talk to people about this all the time that the no code tools break down the, the barriers to creative ideas, right? Like you, there's all these barriers like Objective-C, Swift, like Android Studio, Xcode, all of that stuff is great and wonderful, but sometimes it, it outpaces a little bit. It's like the barriers, the wall between our great idea and actually getting other people to be to be able to enjoy your great idea, like the Scarf app and all of these other things. How do how do tools like no code tools like Bravo, how have they changed the way that you think about creating products? Just the even the ideation process, the concept of things, has it kind of tweaked the way that you think about that? So I think every tool you learn and, and you add to your stack, you help you see how you can build things differently, right? Like, a, and, and how sometimes you need to find a workaround. So for example, I remember when I just learned HTML and CSS, how that changed my view on how I actually built design. Like uh, when I was a little bit more like, you know, I. I had this blank page in front of me, but I, I knew how the developers would look at that. And so I start to think about roles and columns and grids and to help them build this, like, you know, and make it really feasible. So it, I, I believe it turns, turned myself into a better designer. And I believe that also turned 
other people in to better design like uh, creating with bravo has been so fun and interesting like uh, because you know you just add it I stepped after you have done all the design thinking process. So you kept doing the research, you do the haptic prototyping, you do the testing, you do like some iterations because you probably have missed some steps because we all do the all the time after yeah. testing. We always find out like, huh, I didn't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. And uh, it's all happened, right? Like uh, you, you see our daily jobs is like really like that. It's really becoming aware of our flaws so in the what bravo did it was like instead of hiring a development team i could just turn that design that i just finished into a real app right. so and i did that so many times right now My that gosh, uh, like so I, many I, times <laughs> it's like, what a wild thing to be able to say like i'm the owner creator of two published apps four on the way and the sky's the limit because if i have an idea there, there's possibly a, an application that could go with it. And you have no kind of problem thinking in that that lane of like success of getting an idea to market. It's amazing. I just like, even I see the confidence, the joy, the excitement in your eyes as you're talking about it. Like, I love it. I think it's so cool. So, I mean- Yeah, but that's the, that's the point really that there's so much joy in this whole world and, and No Code has helped me in so many ways. Yeah. Like. Uh, Amazing. Well, th let, let me ask you, and I know there's probably so many cool things, but if you were to say, here's the coolest thing, in your opinion, about no code tools like Bravo, like what would you say the coolest thing is in your opinion? So no code is a new, right? And it has been always cool, I would say. Like uh, since I started in the 21st century, guys, this is just the year 2000. I'm not that old and uh, it's really not fancy. I remember, uh, how was my face when I just saw WordPress, you know, like just launched in 2003. I was like, oh gosh, this is just so amazing. And some people actually believed, the main thought really that uh, they, they wouldn't need designers anymore. Right. <laughs> like they just thought, okay, so we just don't need designers. And the design work still needed and um, it's here and it's going faster than ever. So Figma is out there and uh, so many plugins that we use are no code. Right, like uh, right. there are people coding plugins for us to make our workflow better to build prototypes. So it feels that uh, this sky is limit as uh, we can daily see improvements, like with design system, design tokens, and uh, like uh, really we can. We I think the coolest thing is really that we are able to design faster than ever. Yeah, that and is, uh, that we have a lot this of people. tool to help. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I just I think a lot of people are worried that no code is somehow a negative for designers in the design community. But I agree. It's opening up like all of these things that you could never do before for designers. It's it's allowing designers to occupy new spaces and design for new things. So I agree, man. I think that's one of the coolest things about about no code. What do you think? What is the future of no code like technologies? What, what does it look like to you, in your opinion? So I believe um, that since we all we start to build think faster, right? And we will be able to, like, uh, designers and developers to concentrate our efforts on those projects that actually help other users achieving or help other uh, them to, you know, to do something they really want to do. Like in the future, I believe just innovative ideas that get validated the market you bring proved like you know right now there is this this tendency to you get a bigger team and then you build something and then it fails no now we you build faster and then we check the market and when we check the market and see that that this is innovative and that uh, it uh, gets some people interested and then we just work on those projects that make sense for for the people for for the our users and not anymore just in everything until it fails yeah agreed yeah just like increased like like speed time to market like validation like benefit for users like it's just the sky's the limit i agree carla you've been so awesome what where where can people find you online what what kind of things are you putting out there because i know you were talking about helping people what kind of things are, are you doing out there online right now that people could tune into 
So I am creating a channel actually to help Brazilians to learn no code and design. Learning Figma, learning no code like a tools like a Bravo or on others like a Typeform, Airtable, and, and so on, and in their own language. And the, my my really my real goal is really to give it back to the community, like a, give others the chance I had to come to Europe and, uh, you know, you can do that from Brazil. But the point is that uh, many of us there cannot speak another language. And I believe this is a, the right opportunity to give it back to my country. That's amazing. Well, uh, well, I'm sure we'll put a bunch of links for you down in the description of the video so people can check out your stuff, your website, your social media, and, and you're very guaranteed to be like successful YouTube channel as you teach people like <laughs> all these technologies and, and workflows and stuff. So Carla, thanks so much for being part of the interview today and for joining me and uh, we'll see you around. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, yeah, this is really amazing. And uh, I'm really glad that people like you are just distributing these news out there. Well, thank you. We'll take care. We'll talk to you soon. Well, that's it. That's episode two of the No Code Corner in the bag, kind of like chips, data going into the bag. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments. Check the description for a bunch of fun, helpful resources, as well as the information to find Carla Fernandez online. Follow her. She's doing all sorts of really cool stuff. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one goes live. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and leveraging the power of data inside of your no-code apps. We'll see you in the next one.